Hey, I'm Kev K. Must have come. Welcome back to MotoGP 18, where Mario had a superb stop to his career with the Sky Racing Team VR46 machine in Moto2. Can you go even better? Round the Tomas do Re Hondo circuit in Argentina. See, that's more like it. I know. I don't know why anyone hates Bagnaia though. So here goes McDonald in for the first of three possible qualifying efforts in Argentina, which is drenched. Need a boat rather than a bike. Now he's got to beat Marcus's 47-0 somehow. Let's see if he can do that as Lowe's comes out of the pits. He was battling with briefly in Qatar last time. But he was more battling with his former teammate Binder and Verge. Shirota Mir. Not quite there with Oliviera and Baldazaro, but could be round here. Well, he always seems to have decent pace, maybe not the complete package though. Tire, tire wear will be an issue in the race, unless it's in these conditions. If it's dry, no doubt it will be, but in the wet, maybe that's an issue. In the wet though, his pace is an issue, so we see McDonald's a bit better now. Banny's up though, on Marcus's benchmark of 47 flat, which could stand because and like in the dry where track conditions tend to get better as the session goes on in the wet like this best conditions will probably be right at the beginning of the session unless they do help the wet weather tyres just disperse the water better <laughs> with more water on track I'm not sure but then it's less track the grip as well there's so much water on the surface but Let's see what McDonald can do. As it'd be lucky to be close to Marcus's 47 for that. I'm saying that this is a decent effort. In fact, it's a better effort. 46-9? When did McDonald learn to swim? What the hell? Let's see if he can improve that, as he wasn't that good in the final sector. On this lap, maybe the timers are actually getting right now. The top row when he does his first effort. And he wasn't good through this right hand or onto the back straight. Oh, that's poor. That's even worse than his first effort. So we might have to scrap this up and just concentrate on the final. And look at it, almost half a second back already. Well, you know that 46.9 is probably not good enough to hold on to pole then. The way everyone seems to speed up in the final five minutes. That's nicely into the hairpin. That's better than his first effort. And look at this. No wheel spin out the corners as well. Got good traction. He's actually two tenths up. In his previous lap. So he might actually improve this lap still. That's why that horrendous first sector. So go for this right hand up. That's all mere 46-6. Here we go. Binder 45-9. Baldazari 45-8. It still happens in the wet then. So what does a personal best? Six tenths back. But better than his... Than that previous benchmark lap he set. So good to be on mid 46 he's maybe aiming for then. As he goes for the right. Nice and smooth through the final corner. 46-2. Okay. He could actually play for pole here. You can nail this first sector. A bit better than he did on that previous lap. That was half a second lost. And he was only two tenths back in the end. And that's half a second down in his own previous best lap. So... So here goes McDonald for one final effort after that fall. Team have checked over the bike, got him onto the spare, onto his second bike. As remember, he's challenging back nine for that number one role, so they are giving an equal share the second bike. And let's see what McDonald can do then. One final effort, maybe. 
45-8 to beat. Oh, and he stayed way clear of the inside curb on this occasion. And that's better in the first set to half a second down still, though. But better than he's previously done. And he's breaking very late into the hairpin. Very brave for McDonald. Bit wide on the exit, but still would have made up time. Breaking that deep, and he's almost a second back. So was it the second after that where McDonald just suddenly made time? To go through the right hander. He's definitely making time on the riders in front as you use the bank in there to get into that left hander a bit wide for McDonald. But apparently he's up half a second back. This is actually incredibly similar to his previous though, isn't it? Let's go into the final corner. Actually take a bit more of a wider line this time. Okay, a bit more apex speed, McDonald. Oh, he hasn't quite done it, has he? As Balasai holds on for part ahead of Bagnaya and Binder with Virgo leading the second ahead of McDonald and Marquez. Oh, he's just behind his teammate by a couple of tenths, McDonald and Balasai by three tenths. Incredibly close. At the top of Schrotter, leading the further ahead of Mir and Pacini. Marini makes it all free. We got 46 machines into the top 10 ahead of Navarro and Locatelli. Miguel Oliveira won in Qatar. Back down to earth, though, in Argentina in the wet. On the fifth row ahead of Barbara and Lowe's. It's Corto Odendo with a good qualifying on his NTS. Ahead of Vinales, then Gardner, Corsi, Bent Snyder for once around the top 20. And this Tetra in alongside his teammate on the seventh row. Then Roberts, Powley, who we expect to perhaps do better in these conditions. Then Granado, then Kent, Nakashima, Danilo, Kuradin, Fulini, and Manzi. And on the back row, once again, is Ika. What is going on with his qualifying? What is going with Agato in last? And Fanati in 32nd, normally battling for a top 15 slot. So a bit of a crazy grid near the back. But it'll be a crazy race. And will it be wet? So here's what they're revving up then at the start. Waiting for the lights to go. Out as we get underway in Argentina. Oh, shocking start for Ben Binder. So it all switched around the outside. Seen you got him on the inside though, the KTM. Madonna shuffled back down to ninth. Not a good start. So he nicks down the inside of Bind. Who they all three wide. Got Pacini. On the outside or for the inside, should we say? Madonna shuffled back down to ninth. Stuffed on the outside through the right hander. And now he's getting mega slip stream from Binder. I'm sure they're getting flashbacks to Qatar, just... Race it goes, McDonald very aggressive on Pacini. But then in the Pacini was kind of aggressive like that anyway. And it's like Binder's won out of all of this. Up to say we've got Marini up to ninth. Going on taking back seventh. Or not. Binder a bit wide. Or behind. Oh, it takes a sneaky look down is the inside of his ex teammate. Through the left hand, a great move. As his teammate's falling back, it looks like Bagnaya off the podium spots. As he could once again on a charge and he opened it up to 24th. So we down the inside of it looks like Mir is that. Again, held up by Shirota on the exit. The teammate Verge in the podium spots ahead of Bagnaya, but it's bound to start leading the way ahead of Max Marcus. No one takes a look down the inside of Shirota, not quite working. Maybe X is in the first corner. You can get a run into this very tight left hander. Not close enough, is he? Again, maybe he can set this up for the back straight now. Well, he's not going to be hang out to dry. 
There he is. He's in the set shit with the Dynavolt machine. Well, it depends how much slipstream stream Mir behind's got in his Mark VDS machine. That's very quick in a straight line. It's a Spaniard. Not on this occasion, but Donald dives. Not quite finding the space, though. It was a bit frustrated, maybe a bit boxed in at the moment with Donald in Sith. Once again, he might be getting deja vu of Qatar. Remember, he's a bit boxed in there as he dives down the inside of Shirota. That was very brave. Not the best manoeuvre. He's going to do it into the left hander again. And he makes it stick. Just like on Bin, a great move from McDonald. Schrott has a little look back. But that's doing nothing to him. That's it's a long race here. Eight laps. Hopefully McDonald isn't eating his tyres up by being this aggressive early on. He's right behind his teammate Bagnaya. Let's see if he's a bit respectful before his teammates now. He's nicking the outside of his teammate. 4 4. I made that the inside. Dies down the inside in the first corner. Oh, he goes a bit wide for the middle of the corner. Maybe when he exit, he can make the move stick on his. And this Italian. And it's like he has into fourth. Oh, it was a superb start to the season. And he's already battling for victories. And only his second race with the team. Even though Baldur's Eye looks like he's trying to make his escape already. While well, the Spaniards battle for second. Look at that from Marcus and Vergi. He can fit a piece of paper between them in the breaking zone. He's on a bit wide for the right hander, but he looks like he's holding on. Really they have to, who would have thought the wet weather? This moment Donald becoming alive now. After being so fearful of it at first. On a Grand Prix motorcycle machine. Now he's motoring in it, even though I know it's not fully wet here in Argentina. In the race. But he's still superb in qualifying as well. That's all he's right with. Marcus and Verge. Look at this run! It's got on the Mark VDS machine. On Verge as well. Might as well just take two for one. And he makes it stick while Marcus gets past. The Dynavolt man. So it's Baldassari McDonald chasing. Marcus Verge. Bagnaya rounds out the top five. It's like all the Bagnaya fans are coming McDonald fans. Is that what's happened? We were in the team of Shirota ahead of Binder. McDonald all over the back of Baldassari. And oh, no, he's not very good for that right hand. And again, a poor run onto the back straight. Could open the door for Marcus into the tight right hand airpin. Maybe even Fergie if he gets the slit stream. Quarter on course, he battling like a hell for 13th. Eka battling his teammate Lowe's despite starting on the back row again. Spending coming alive in the race. Can he actually get points on this occasion? Yes, McDonald just holds on from Marcus. Does it go for the right hander? Just checking up that throttle. Once again, the front is getting a bit worn for McDonald, but it's not too bad. Because the rear is not worn at all. Let's approach the halfway mark of a tantalising motorcycle Argentine Grand Prix. Got a couple of young guns in Baldassare and McDonald in the same camp, remember now, in the VR46 Academy. Along with Bagnaya, Marini, Quite a few riders in this field. Front runners in this field as well. It's going to the second half of the race. McDonald virtually pushing Baldassari through the first corner. 
Let's look at that dry line appearing on the racing line. They've all got wet tyres, remember, so will that affect them on the final lap, maybe? We're about to find out. Because that's better from McDonald through the right hander. But still, he's not quite in that slipstream. In that toe, four bound decide to make a dive into the hairpin. Definitely in slipstream range, though, on this occasion at least. Doing very easy into the hairpin. Marcus says, get out of the way. Lord says, not on this occasion, mate. He goes through the left hand at eight tenths behind Bowder's eye, but when you know where McDonald makes his time up, is the second half of this lap now. It's very wide through the right hander, but look at that line work to really square up the exit. McDonald pushes short to back the Olivier over seventh. McDonald forced to take to the green runoff as he hit the inside sausage curb there. So it might have cost him time. I know it looks like he gained on Baldessari, but he could even be closer to the Italian without that mistake. You go through, final corner. Look at McDonald all over the curve. Another 45 flat as well. These top two are damn consistent. There's Olivia ahead of Shirota. He's recovering from that poor qualifying, is he? No, Shirota saying no. Having none of it. Or is he? They're swapping places every second. Can't keep up here. As Ika batting for a point in 16th with the veteran hit to Barbara. That's, that's a better run from to the back straight for McDonald. With two and a half laps to go almost. He's in the tower once again. He's not close enough to make the move, is he though? Into the right hander. Has he got Marcus behind? Oh, that's better through the hairpin, though. On this occasion for McDonald. Oh, he's cha the rear's chasing him. Bit of long left. Maybe a sign these tyres are getting a bit worn now. A bit second hand. And oh, Marcus still says, hey, I'm, in I'm interested in fighting for second. We don't have none of it though. And look at that once again into that left hand. He's so good. He tries to exit that next left hand the well, but Bowder's eye he's just got the measure of McDonald annoyingly. McDonald may have caught up, but Bowder's eye he's got the speed to stay in the lead. He looks like. But onto the penultimate lap. Look at that from McDonald's. Bowder's eye set the fastest lap. Or did he? McDonald's set a 44-7 and now he's down the inside. George is saying he might be over between this pair. McDonald's got the inside line on Baldessaro. They touch again. Oh, the pawns. The VR46 machine do battle. McDonald's takes a look. Baldessaro says, back off. And look at McDonald right in the slitch from about us. Like, this is the run he's wanted. As Marcus can forget about it now. And look at this McDonald down the inside for the lead. Can he hold it on the brakes though? He can through the right. He's held on. He takes the lead. First time he's led laps. On this machine, but Baldur's Eye just sweeps by through the left hander when McDonald struggles. McDonald sweeps back by into the right hander where he doesn't. Oh, and Baldur's Eye gets right into him. They're really battling for the win here. McDonald holds on. Through the left hander. He knew so solidified the lead for the first time in this race. Could have taken the lead at an important stage as well. Just a lap to go as Marcus up to second at about Azari apparently. He's still in the hunt for the victory. It's the Mark VDS machine. Small through the final corner. 
on to the final lap. Six tenths ahead of Marcus and Bounders Eye is down to third. Marcus has the fast out the race though, 44 6. This is an over. Especially when McDonald tries to go to America for the next round of lap early. There's Danny Kemp battling Manzi for 31st. Yeah, it's very important we get those updates. For every overtake counts, shall we say? Oh, McDonald, not the best run onto the back straight. There is Alex Marquez. Oh, he's right on his tail. Two tens behind. It sounds like Marquez is going for the outside. Does he have the overspeed into the corner? Norris got the inside. And holds on just. Alex Marquez is desperate for a win after missing out last time in Qatar. But is it coming to him this race? Madonna's holding on. The tyre's virtually gone on the front. Luckily the rear still got grip so he survives. And then through the left hand he holds on. Surely that's the threat averted. No way is he going to be winning here. Our two podiums begin the year. It's all happened in his Moto3 season when he won. As he goes into the hairpin through the right. Just the left hand kink to go and McDonald is a victor. For Sky Racing Team VR46 for the first time. What a win. What a race. You know, I'm seeing it in the wet as well. Well, dry conditions, but wet track. As Madonna wins by half a second ahead of Marquez, then bound aside just a couple of tenths back. Very disappointing for the Italian after leading most of the way. Then Verge ahead of Bagnaia with Bindu in tip, just holding off his teammate Olivio, set the fastest lap, but recovered the seventh after a poor qualifying ahead of Shirota Amir. Pacini rounds out the top ten ahead of Marini, so good points from all of the VR46 machines with Corsi. Ika in 13th after starting 31st. Definitely gets the gold star today if McDonald didn't win. Then Cortero and Sam Lowe's grabs the final point ahead of Locatelli. With Vinales running out the top 20 and at the back is Danny Kent. Dreadful for the speed up rider. So in the Riders Championship, McDonald leads the Moto2 Championship for the first time. Five points ahead of Baldessari, seven ahead of the Vieira. Mark is up to fourth after his very solid podium ahead of Verge, Binder down a couple of places, Bagnaia in 7th, Shorter down a couple of places to 8th, Bassini Amir climbs into the top 10, Luca Marini up to 12th, one of the biggest climbers, perhaps the biggest climber in the standings, and Forden quite a lot is to Barbaro, up quite a lot is Cortuaro, has 18 runs score points so far, this season, Fanati the best of the non-point scores in 19th head of Remy Gardner. And the back is Danny Kent. So McDonald solidifying that first rider role in ahead of Bagnaio might be his right-hand man this season then as they battle for the championship. Everything up to level 85, apart from Ninango up to level 86. And look at all those development points and reputation earned. As in MotoGP, Marquez won ahead of no one else because who matters apart from Mark Marquez in MotoGP? Apparently, while in Moto3, they lost count of enemy overtakes to places. Bezeki won the onslaught ahead of Martin and Kenet. So for bike development, 10,000 to spend this time. So do we just up the braking power for the brakes? It'll be important round the Circle of the America, especially at the end of that back straight. And into the first corner as well. Why not? Let's do it. So the brakes are getting developed this season apparently. And so is Mayo with his new helmet as well. One for one. With the new helmet going to make it two for two. Round the circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. Next time and extend that championship lead field. We're saying that. But Southwatch him. We'll find out if he can next time.